What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Keith, and welcome back to another episode of the Wholesome Men Podcast, the podcast where we give our wholesome men's perspective each and every episode. And of course, today, I got my guys with me and one special guest. First, go ahead. We got Justin. Y'all already know what it is. Y'all know what I'm going to say. Your favorite wholesome man. Give me a follow on IG, JLP underscore 63. Let's get it. Yes, sir. <laughs> and we got, of course, Dr. B. Yo, what's good, everybody? It's uh, the Raspy Doctor, Dr. B, Dr. Bates. Um, you can follow me on my Petty Twitter, which is Petty Next Door underscore four. And, you know, I have a guest. I know this guest personally. So I want to introduce a very distinguished and very uh, uh, well knowledgeable guest, Torian Tim, who is a what I would call a, te- a teacher where she does teaching uh, administrators by daytime, but really a superhero um, daytime and nighttime. She has a lot of projects going on. So I'm not even going to attempt to go through all of them, but uh, I-, I was going to give her perspective on some of the things we have. So Torian, please welcome to the Host of Men podcast. Let us know who you are and share your Twitter uh, info as well. All right, cool. What's up, what's up? Uh, this is Torian Thames. Uh, uh, at Torian is all things. That's Torian with two R's. Let me just spell it for y'all. T-O-R-R-I-A-N is all things. You can find me on Instagram. Uh, Rodney was right. I'm an educator by day and I guess just living life beyond limits at night. Um, you can find me on Inside Insecure. If any of you guys are a part of the Insecure Discussion Group, I do a podcast on Sundays at 10 there. And uh, you know, catch me on YouTube, Instagram. I'm, I'm out there. Just just Google me. That's what they say. Uh, <laughs> you'll find yeah. a couple options. Yeah, <laughs> Google it. Just, just reach out. <laughs> yeah, flex. you'll find it. Somebody <laughs> say Google me, that's a big flex. Uh, <laughs> it's it Really, it's a baby flex, but I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Google <laughs> Some, yeah. Something gonna pop up and just reach out. Hey, <laughs> love it. And of course, we had to bring a woman on the podcast because I know we get feedback a lot. For those who don't know, our analytics say most of our audience is women and we get comments <laughs> all the time, which is, is the funny part. It's the Wholesome Men podcast, but we mostly have women listeners. So shout out to y'all. Um, but yeah, we get that all the time that we need a women guest because we we say dumb shit sometimes. We we men we say dumb shit. We, oh, I, I'm I'm honored <laughs> I'm honored to step in as the wholesome woman of the day. But hey, hey, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Let me just preface with uh, I'm speaking from my own personal experiences. My voice does not represent all women. Now, we're not going to generalize all women by what I have to say today. But I'm going to say what I say. Perfect. So. There we go. There we go. <laughs> that being said, go ahead. What you going to say, Dr. B? I said retweet. I'm re- like, I would oh, retweet. Uh, uh, all, right. all right. So we're going to jump right into it. Since I know you mentioned uh, you were a former athlete, we're going to jump right into the sports discussion of, I know we have this discussion all the time in our group chat and everything about women's sports in general. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of us have a lot of varying opinions and, Opinions such as pay wage gap and just pay, pretty much viewership. So I, I kind of like to start around going around the table, which we think of our opinion on women's sports in general. So we're going to start general. We're going to work our way down. So Justin. We're going to narrow it. I mean, women's sports in general, or are we going to talk about particular sports? Because <laughs> we could talk about sports. particular sports because it's kind of, I mean, I watch. I, I think watch. specifically that pay wage gap and just like the equity of it all, like. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, as far as like the the big gap, I've I've had this conversation with Dr. B before. I mean, I feel like women should get paid more, but I don't think women should get paid equally what the men make. In my opinion, just based off the market, based off of the money that they bring in. If you look at the numbers, like if you like for the WNBA, for example, like if there was no NBA, there wouldn't be a WNBA. So I can't sit here and say that like a Skylar Diggins should be making 40 million like LeBron James is making 40 million. Now I'm not saying her making 75,000 is acceptable, but I can't sit here and say that okay. based off the numbers, I don't think that it, it, they should get paid more, but I don't know if the equal pay would really make sense. But why, what are you basing that off of? Like, the numbers. <laughs> just the revenue? Just the revenue? Yeah, I mean, how can okay. you pay? Okay, what numbers do you speak of? Cause everybody says, look at the numbers. 
And I just want, do you have actual numbers or? I can't, no, I don't, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you and say I got, got the numbers <laughs> on deck ready. But like, if you say, I mean, if you look at the, I can guarantee if we pulled up the revenue streams from the NBA compared to the WNBA, and you take away the money that the NBA makes that they give to the WNBA, you can't, there's no way they can even afford to pay them that much money. But, but the deeper question is, why is there a, such a very difference do I mean do the viewership and I, this is what I'm kind of getting at as well like as far as men don't really like to watch women's sports and they talk bad on it so I'm trying to you know from a men's so perspective like why is the fan base so narrow yeah, yeah. what do you think why from a men's a male's perspective I, I in, in my personal opinion it's more entertaining to watch the NBA than it is the WNBA okay we're going to leave it at I that. I mean, everybody yeah, want to see it. Wait, 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 wait. We're going to leave it at that. We're going to get back to it. All right, all right. <laughs> Dr. All right. B, Dr. B, we're going to go ahead and let you give your opinion. Yeah, I think, I think if, we, if, if we only look at revenue stream and base the conversation from an equal standpoint, we're missing the story. Now, can we have a conversation first about what's equitable and disproportionately and how women are paid way less? Like we're not even we're not even meeting in equitable sense. Like they're getting below, right? So I first want to even have a conversation of like, how do we get this up to an equitable? And then we can have this conversation about getting paid the same. And then this is why I you know, think capitalism is, is fucked up because then it forces us to have a conversation of, well, they're not bringing enough revenue. Well, have we considered a larger system that prevents women from being uh, more previewed and prevent women from being more in, in, in anything, like anything extra, anything just from a sense of just the same, women have never had the equitable access that men has had. So from jump, we don't we like we're they're from a deficit and we don't want to have that conversation. We just want to have a capitalistic conversation of the revenue streams aren't the same. Well, it wouldn't be the same if you had a, a, a forever humanity head start in terms of gender equity. Just not gonna be the same. So let's let's have the conversation of in WNBA, did you see the rooms that they placed WNBA players in compared to the the win the men? Talking about in the bubble? The bubble, yeah. yeah like yeah. Okay. the pictures that I saw, it, and I could only really go off the pictures, but it didn't really, Legend. it didn't do it like it was pathetic. So, uh, and then we could have the conversation about, well, it's not entertaining. Well, let's look at soccer. We see that women, uh, soccer on Olympic drew way more viewership than the men's soccer, and the women were better, and the men still got paid more money. So even in that case, we can bring instance where women were better and were better and were the better draw and didn't get the pay. Where is that conversation as well? So I don't really buy into just only the revenue stream. I understand it from a capitalistic standpoint, but we know capitalism ain't fair to anybody but people who are in power. Okay, Torian, I'll give your opinion on it. Okay, so I guess I'm going to start with laying this little foundation. Just a few short decades ago, women even were able to give their opinion on anything happening in this country. So off the bat, women have been dehumanized from kind of the very beginning. And so when we were finally kind of led to the table, they've allowed us to sit at the table for just pennies on the dollar. And now we're deciding that we've been at the table long enough and we need a new table. We're saying that what the problem is the table itself. And so I'm gonna build the foundation with that. But I think there's a I think there's a problem with because we have to look beyond WNBA. I did play, I play college basketball, but I think it's interesting that a woman can go through train probably just as hard, if not more, than her male counterpart, be, be the best at her craft, and she doesn't have the option. She doesn't even have access to um the type of wealth that he would have access to she has to earn just the normal way so it's like do she does she why should she still have to put that type of wear and tear on her body when she can go into another industry so I guess my first question is why is there not even access to it and then we talk about the the entertainment of it all I uh, if you watch it when's the last time you actually watched the WNBA game anybody will actually watch one that, let's let's like, be, it's fair <laughs> and just season just kicked off has anybody actually watched the game I have not 
You've never I've seen, seen one. I've seen highlights. I've seen. I've seen. I've seen. I've seen, I've seen a game before only because I knew somebody that was playing. Okay. But I've never went out of my way to like watch a game. If I'm gonna be honest, you can even look at how patriarchy is riddled in it with how it's shot. The type of camera angles that the NBA gets and cut, uh, quick cut looks and scenes and replays and uh, the type of commentary, the quality of work that's put into shooting a WNBA game is completely. I mean, just completely outdoing what you would see on a WNBA game. It's not even equal. Like, WNBA game, you're just watching up and down basketball as if you were sitting there. Even that's not exciting. We all know that sometimes when it comes to a good movie, a good movie is not necessarily the storyline. It's how it's shot. So I just think even from the jump, you didn't even give us, again, access to the type of resources that you have. Uh, again, continuing, like to, continuing to marginalize that. But then I also want to look at, Women's soccer. Women's soccer consistently earns about 2% more in revenue than the men's soccer team. So we're looking at the money. Why is it that they're having access to million-dollar salaries while the women's soccer players, it literally says in the bylaws that they max out at a six-figure salary. They're saying, you, again, don't even have access to what we have access to. You know what I'm saying? So we're saying, like, from the... As we we look at it from every single angle, it's always saying that you will be beneath us. Like, you don't even get to... We talking equal. You never even we. It was never. It, it was never designed to even be equal. For sure. And so, for sure. How do I look at team sports versus individual sports? Sports where women are individuals seem to do well. Tenis, tennis. Uh, looking at you know everybody's watching. We got tennis, gymnastics, cool. ice skating. Right. And then it seems like when there's women gathering or being it's in collective, sexualized like, pretty teams, much that's when we start to see an issue. So I'm wondering, is that just a situation where we're, again, objectifying women's bodies? Like, why are the individual sports doing well, but the team sports seem to be the issue? But I'm going to fall back. Let's I'm going I'm I'm <laughs> I'm to keep, keep it real slash problematic. And these are real <laughs> conversations that we have as men. I mean, a lot of the times, men don't give a fuck about the WNBA because a lot of the girls are not, as they end up, in their opinion, are not as attractive. And a lot of times you got uh, women like Brittany. No, you, okay, work. so are you a fan of the sport or are you a fan of pretty women? Yeah. That's what I'm getting to. Exactly. <laughs> this, is, this is our conversation that at that point when it comes, if we just worried about strictly hooping, of course they're going to use that excuse. So girls are not as, as athletic. They're not dunking like LeBron James and stuff like that. But then, yeah, it comes to a uh, point when you think of women's sports or just women in general, men tend to objectify women in these sports and so that's the table that. that's the table we trying to break down like okay. <laughs> that's, and, I'm keep it real that's what it comes down to and to keep it under because I'm not going to sit here and be like like I've been like this entire advocate all my life yeah like the only one of the main reasons I jumped into women's sports was, was because of Kobe like Kobe yeah, so Kobe. it wasn't even because of one it's like oh well Kobe said it let me go check it out so, like, even those ways, we have to figure out, like, there's ways that it's co-opted and it's nuanced, and we don't think about it. Now, I'm glad Kobe said something, but then when I began to, and I've always liked Diana Taurasi when she was at UConn, so I kind of knew a little bit, but I really started digging in once Kobe was like, yo, look at, look at this. And then I was like, bro, they are way skilled, right? Like, they literally have good skills, better skills than probably have. The men in the NBA, but again, Ooh. or or just or maybe just have men. Oh, not necessarily the NBA because the NBA is a specialized group. Whoa. That is a specialized group. Whoa. The NBA Whoa. is a specialized group, but I'm gonna say half of men. Period. Not the, maybe not the NBA, but yeah, right. You men. tripping? <laughs> well, Justin, I think there's a difference between athletic and skill. Like I think. Okay. Okay. I think the men by far in the NBA. I mean, that's a special. I mean, these yeah, niggas is. Jumping out the gym. I'll pick yeah. the worst player in the NBA, the worst player in the NBA Uh-oh. to give the Diana Taurasi or somebody else to run for their money. That's, that's cap. Justin, you said you could take the worst player in the NBA mm-hmm. and put him against, you said Diana Taurasi. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering, regardless of who would win it, would there be competition? Could would she be- compete with their worst? So their worst is making. Uh, let's call this, their worst is making at least $500,000 compared to their best. And I think if you got them together, there would at least be competition. Like, I'll, I'll agree with that. I'll agree with that. There'd be some so comp. That's the, that's the disproportionate thing we're looking at. Okay, so y'all worst player 
Because to me, you're only as good, you're only as you're only as strong as your weakest link, right? So mm-hmm. you mean tell me y'all's worst player is making three times as much or ten times as much, literally, than our best? That's a problem. Like, I mean, my 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 perspective comes from a capitalistic standpoint. So I guess I see what you're saying from your perspective on that end. But like, my perspective is it's hard to pay somebody that money when they're not even bringing that in. But okay, and I understand that. But I guess I'm like, why doesn't it make? Why is it? I guess it's like, why isn't it entertaining? Because I'm wondering, are people a fan of the sport and the competition that comes with the sport? Or are we a fan of like, I don't know, let's say men fantasizing over things they can't do? Is it a little bit of fetishism in it? Oh. Like, what, I'm wondering, why can you not watch women? Not you per se. I'm just saying, why is the consensus is that? It's not worthy of watching because I think from that from that problematic standpoint, it's the fact that whenever you watch an NBA game, I mean, are there men out there that fantasize about that? Probably. I can. I mean, I'll speak for people myself. Pay for fantasy. Okay. People pay. Okay. People pay to see. People pay to see the flashy dunks, the flashy passes, the crossovers. I mean, yeah, women can do that. I'm not saying they can't, but like whenever you watch the NBA, it's just it's just so much more. From my perspective, it's just so much more exciting than because a lot of just like Ronnie said, I will agree, or Dr. B said, I'll agree that he said there are some women that are really skilled at basketball. There's a difference in skill and athleticism. The NBA is a lot of athleticism for sure. So you see all that flashy stuff and that sells, right? Skill what WNBA players are more so like fundamental, you know, dribble, pass, you know, set the play off the screen, pull up. Like it's good. If you're a basketball fan, like, yeah, you love to see it, but it's like. If you're really wanting excitement, it's just I just have never just been like, oh, I can't wait to watch that sparse game tonight. So it's a so it's a physiology thing. You're thinking women cannot physically do that. So because I can do what they're doing, I'd rather watch somebody that does something I cannot do. Fair. So it's okay. It's the fantasy of it all. I get it. People pay for fantasy. I mean, may, I mean, all, we maybe. don't look at we don't look at the same way. I, in my opinion, basketball as we do like women in track because I see guys lined up to watch like track meets and it could yeah. be some of the you know oh, wow. good but I think that they're really like look how fat look at the competition of it all and we can do it for that particular sport but then for other sports again women and individuals they got the short shorts on that's why we watching <laughs> what are you talking about that's- women when y'all <laughs> when women's bodies can be policed and then they're single and it's almost like if a woman is by herself she doesn't have a sense of power but when women gra- gather as a collective i think there's something subconsciously somewhere down the line back there that's a problem i got the salem witch trials anywhere that women have gathered collectively and, and shown success historically has been a problem in this nation period. But I digress. We can take basketball out. What about every other sport? That's a problem. Like what? What about soccer? <laughs> okay. And I, and I wanted to touch on that. The team literally wins championships like they do. Every year. They so do. But again, going on. So like, yes, I, I, you mentioned that women's, women's uh, FIFA soccer, they win the World Cup pretty consistently. Men's, they're trash. They're awful. I think from the money standpoint, I don't necessarily know how they do the payments with USA Olympic sports, but I will pay more. That's the best. But but what I'm saying is, again, from a capitalistic standpoint, men's they don't bring in more. I can't let you have no, 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 no. No, you're right. You're right. And from a USA standpoint, they don't bring in more. But payments, as far as like the whole FIFA organization, when you look at the Germanies and all that from the men's standpoint and the women's standpoint, like the women, when they played some of these teams in the semifinal, they went in 11 to two, 10 to three, they killing everybody from a men's standpoint. It's a lot more competitive. There's a lot more money that comes into the FIFA men's league, which is why I see how they would get paid this much again, from a capitalistic standpoint. That's why I'm saying like, so, so again, the women are making more due to their athleticism from the soccer standpoint. Is that what you're saying? Cause you're saying that they're not, the other countries aren't competing at a high level like USA is. I think that, I think the competition is a lot less slim on the women's side than there is on the men's side. So okay. that's what I'm saying. Women I, I, have to just, I have to say neutral there. I don't know. <laughs> women are in, in this particular case, Women are damned if they're too competitive and damned if they're not. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I was about to say. That's so what it's winning. Sounds. It wasn't designed. Right. It's not. Right. It's okay. not. I'm not talking about that. I'm not saying it's because 
like they win in 10 to three and yeah, yeah, yeah. They're being overly competitive. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying like, that just shows what their competition is like. You watch a men's soccer, you watch men's FIFA. You have never seen, Oh, so-and-so. And during the actual FIFA, not the qualifying leagues. But we don't wanna, we, I can't speak for the rest of the world right now. We ain't even got home together. Let's I'm go just, to the USA. That's true. That's true. That's true. USA is not together. But I'm just saying <laughs> like, it makes sense why they bring in more money because the overall pool on the men's side is uh, there's just a lot more revenue coming in from the overall pool. Like, yes, I 100% agree with you that women's women's bring in more. I, I agree with that. But and, the and overall... The, the checks are different. The checks are different. And I would encourage to really look at this from, you know, from all sports. I think, you know, you can look at that from soccer standpoint, but there are some sports within the Olympics, the highest level of competition that women have consistently performed better and still don't get paid. And it not, it's not just soccer, right? Like gymnastics is popular, you know? And so... These other sports, you know, figure skating, again, yes, there's the policing of, of bodies and, you know, looking, but if, if, if they're going to look, at least match, right? Like, if we're looking at a capital, like, even if we're looking at a capitalistic paradigm, you can't separate capitalistic paradigm from the patriarchal uh, or sexism that's in, intertwined with it. So y'all, even still, if, y'all still get to decide who and what will have access to what, right? right? I get that. So you saying sexism is the main reason why there's a pay wage gap. Cool. All right. So the next point question pretty much is what can we do to increase or close this pay wage gap or increase viewership? Well, let me just say this. First, I think that that's something that men got to work on. Like, I don't want to attack well, women. Like, what should we do? Like, we need to go wow. research. We need to go have our groups together. By the way, I got a men's group called Stopping Patriarchy. We're going to be having meetings every week uh, and starting uh, September. So we'll put that information out there. But nonetheless, like men, we got to do that work. Just like we want white people to work on racism, men got to work on sexism and patriarchy, misogyny. So I don't necessarily, you know, Tori, you can ask if you want, but I just think that that falls to us. And speaking of that, like, how can we help marginalized communities? Google it. There's your answer. So you need to go Google that. And uh, do that information ourselves. But again, just just like what you said, like you can do that. You can get your research. You can get your knowledge. You can talk about that. We can have these groups. But how does that get them to be paid equally? In that's in why that I sense? want you to answer what you think. Yeah. You talk about well, solutions. Well, after I, I don't was, have one. Wow. <laughs> I, I have just a bunch like of ideas. It's good how it is. <laughs> I mean, that. I mean, I'm not saying it's good how it is. Like again, I said women should get paid more but i just can't i just can't see how they would get paid the same like i just can't see it i just don't see it so um i think i'm gonna quote dr b from the last episode where it's basically like the people that are in power have to be the ones to be the advocate to advocate for the ones who are in the marginalized position why people got to do why people got to talk to white people about racism in America and racial inequities. Mm-hmm. Men are going to have to be the ones to carry the torch there, but you but they need to collaborate with women on how those decisions are going to be made. And it might have to be a situation where capitalism can't reign king over here. It might have to be a collective situation where it's like, okay, because we see the value in what they're doing, we're gonna to have to share. And I know you said the NBA already gets WNBA money, but it might be a situation where y'all are going to have to rewrite the rules. You're all going to have to offset. You're going to have to create an equitable model, not an equity model. You know what I mean? It's, it, I'm sorry. You have to create an equitable model, not an equal one. Mm-hmm. It, it just, that's the only way that it's really going to work that I can see. So and <laughs> I, I saw an illustration um, and we might, we'll post this on our, uh, on our IG, but it was a, uh, there used to be this illustration of uh, somebody wanting to watch a baseball game and there's a short person, a middle person, and a tall person. And, you know, the tall person can watch it, but the other two people couldn't because of the way that, you know, it was set up, you know, whether it's born that way or whatever. So the equal was to, you know, give everybody the same box of the same length so that everybody can watch. But then you still have the tallest person being able to still watch from a higher standpoint just because of the way 
they were born. And, and that's what that's a more equal model, which I don't think it's a more restorative justice model. Um, an equity model says that you accommodate how a person was born. And so you make that box adjust just enough where the tall person is the same height. So now you got the short person just as tall as or as a tall person, and that's what we call equitable. But do you know what a restorative justice is? A restorative justice would just get rid of the goddamn fence. And it don't matter how I get tall rid of the you table. Are. I've been trying to tell you I would so, kick it over the table. <laughs> you know, and we've got to be able to understand like if we're also going to do restorative justice, which I think this is a conversation in terms of patriarchy that we're not ready to have. This is why I think we got to do a lot of reflection. But if we are really into a restorative model, then that means just like we're asking white people to account for the historical accounts of what they've done in the past to to bring us up to where we're at now, which reparations, then we're going to have to start thinking about what does gender reparations look like. And if that means if there's been a system like the NBA who has had billions of dollars for 30 and 40 and 50 years, then how do we try to move some of that over there to the WNBA to make it more equitable? Not equal, just a little bit more equitable. So then the Diana Taurasi's can at least get 2.3 million, you know, or at least 10 million. Like we're not even asking for 80, but Diana Taurasi who was one of the top, like she was the Kobe of the league for like, seven years and she couldn't get past the million and 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 literally one of the faces of the WNBA that carried that league meanwhile Kobe carried the league and was getting 20 million after 20 million after 20 million so I just think that at least can we look at the equitable conversation we have a lot of education around how we devalue women so it makes sense for us for a lot of men to be like well that's not an interesting sport well, your entire life you've been conditioned to think that women are less. So that's an easy comment to say. Whereas I have least- a uh, quick question. Are there any industries or markets that men don't have access to as far as earning wages? As far as earning wages? Like, like is there any industry that a man would come to and not earn as much as women? Not nursing, not education, not you go, you go do the same thing she do. You got your nursing license and that. Y'all both make coming in making ninety off the gate. Excellent. I was about to say porn, but that's not true either. But even that is really yeah, not, just the fact yeah. that women have to resort to that versus and and get money from who? Who's the highest? Yeah. Who's the biggest uh, consumers of, of consumer of that? Yeah. Who's the biggest consumer of that market? So, I guess what I we're asking is that. Could there be a way to create a process where women have access to the same things that men do if they have put in the same amount of work and skill and grit like their counterparts have? And it it probably, you know, and like I said, that's why I started off with it was never designed to be that way. It's when we talk about systemic racism, it was never designed to be a certain type of way. So the only thing you can do is just rewrite all of it. It's Everything got to go. Burn <laughs> it's all got to go. Burn it down. <laughs> Just listen, burn it. Burn it down. Unfortunately, and it's hard. It's hard to release power. We all know it. Parents are authoritative because they want the power. That's how it works. I agree. I think, yeah, I think we just got to restructure the system. And speaking of just being on the same playing field, this next topic, I think maybe, I think debatable of if we're on the same playing field and for the audience that's listening, I know we kind of late on this topic, but we kind of waited till we had a, a woman on a podcast to kind of discuss entanglement. So just a little background about ent- uh, this whole entanglement stuff that was going on. Uh, so Will Smith and Jada, two famous actors, of course, if y'all don't know, uh, they recently had a array of table talk on her show, pretty much saying, admitting that she had a, a relationship of some sort with August Alcina. Now they did uh, say pretty much that they were separated, but me personally, I think they were in an open relationship and, you know, stuff happened while they was, while, you know, while they was together, in my opinion. Now it was such a huge deal 
why it happened. I, to me, I don't think it's such a big deal. But in y'all opinion, why do y'all think it was such a big deal in this whole social media area? Why it went crazy to everybody else? We're going to start with Justin. Go go around the table again. Um, I mean, as far as this whole situation, I mean, we've talked about this in the group chat. I personally think all oh, this is a marketing scheme. I think, I, in for better word, bullshit. <laughs> like, I don't really see, I don't see how you can be, how, first off, this happened years ago, so they say. Second off, when has August Alcina even been relevant since before before this entanglement stuff? Hello. Let alone he dropped a song with Rick Ross called Entanglement. <laughs> it like, was fast, but it, it, it got me. It got, it got it, but it got numbers because people want to hear what they talk about. So I just don't think how you can even like entertain. And not only that, but like what kind of marriage if someone steps out on you with someone that you took in, like how do you just sit there and have a, a talk with cameras around you and you just – I don't know. I just can't see the authenticity of the whole thing, honestly. Like, I just can't. The, the industry's the industry's a fucked up thing. So I just don't. I just can't. I can't buy into it. There's 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 something behind it. What that is, I don't know. But I can't really. I can't get down to it, honestly. I ain't pay it that much mind. On top of the fact that like Jada's held to a like Jada was definitely held to a different standard than Will would have been had he had did the same thing. But we'll talk about that in a second, I guess. All right, Doctor B, what you think? I'm gonna let Torian go. Okay. <laughs> to Torian. Um, so we're asking about like why was entanglement why was entanglement he... such a big deal? Yeah. I think it was because okay, there's a couple things, but I think first was because of how Jada named it. You know, mm-hmm. when she decided to get on Red Table Talk and be transparent with us, she did not say I cheated on you. And it's almost like she didn't oh, give him <laughs> she didn't give him the satisfaction. She didn't release her power to him. She said that I was in something else, but it, it didn't discount what I had with you. It's almost like I think problem people had a problem with the fact that Jada was able to name her truth and they didn't get to define it for her. I don't, I can keep going or we can bounce to Rodney and I can come back. Like <laughs> Rodney, that's my intro to that. Yeah. So um, you know, one as I, I, I I think I was saying this earlier with some guys. So one, I hope, you know, if there is some type of mental thing or if August is going through some things, I hope it gets help. So that's one. I don't know his situation, nor do I know really Jada and Will. If I'm being honest, um, I mean, folks should be able to have their understanding with the folks that are involved, and that's kind of really their business. What, what I really kind of want to dive into is really kind of the power of the situation, right? That Will is deemed weak because Jada had, like she did what she wanted to do at the time that she wanted to do and with whom she wanted to do. And so now Will is weak, right? And meanwhile, it was okay when it was open and Will was out, apparently Will was out there. Nobody batted an eye. And so I think, like I look at kind of the juxtaposition of how, how women and, and and you gotta understand, like I always operate from a mindset of who has power. Like that's my that's how I look at everything. So I understand on the surface, it's like, man, yeah, y'all reading too much into it. What it looked like was this. No, there's there's a power dynamic of how people perceive their relationship. And when a woman goes and starts saying, it's this, and folks want her to say something else, and she don't budge, then they're going to come for her. And I think that's what they were trying to do, and Will yeah, or Jada didn't budge. Right. Was they really coming for her, though? Oh, I mean, at least yeah. in the comments. I, saw- I, think, I think Will was getting slandered, slaughtered. August was getting slaughtered. And this, in my opinion, Jada was looking like the uh, the woman version of Future, honestly. <laughs> the problem the problem is that and I hate to get all whatever no I don't the problem <laughs> is that people are only valuing Jada they're only valuing Jada by her relationship to other to men they're not it's like either her relationship with Will or her relationship with August is how we're going to define her value you get what I'm saying but why can't she just be an individual who made a decision and she did what she did and that's that and yeah and I don't, I'm actually not that into it either. I'm just like, yeah. what's the problem? This was five years ago. They resolved it themselves. So, 
And I think we have a hard time believing that openness (laughs) over relationships are a thing. Well, and that's what I'm saying. I think another thing is that in particular, like the black community, like I don't think there's a lot of knowledge around what does it mean to be in a polymerous relationship? What does that look like? How can that be healthy for some instead of judging? And I think that the, you know, whether they were in that or not, and, and maybe Augustine develop feelings more than he wanted to. Like, that's the, the you know, that and could probably be a, an effect of being in open relationships or polymerous is that, you know, feelings are developed. But that should they be judged if that's what they decided to do? And I think that sometimes, particularly, and I'm only speaking like to my people, in terms of like Black people, like, we, we, we get real judgmental if we know it's open. And meanwhile, like, well, we... Behind the scenes, folks are doing all kinds of stuff. So you in an open relationship anyway. You you mad because somebody wanted to be upfront and intentional versus your stuff was open before you asked for it to be open. That's right. why I think they <laughs> kind of pose it the way it is because not everybody they know not everybody ready for this whole open relationship. Because there's a honestly, there's a lot of marriages that's in open relationships and they didn't sign up for it. So they didn't it. sign up for it and they or they just choose not to tell anybody because they know that you'll get judged. And I think since Will and Jada is such high status, they had to say they was uh, separated at the time, but that's my personal opinion. I know what I know what they said what it what it was, but that's my I don't think we ready for that real conversation. And like you were saying, uh August Elsina is going outside. Uh I like to call it uh tender dicking pretty much. Uh, oh, here we go. <laughs> he's pretty much tender dicking because I mean he is another word for unrequited love. Uh he fell in love with Jada and Jada's like, hold on, homie, you already know what it was from the jump. And when you we, he said Will and him already had that conversation. I'm believing August and plus that entanglement <laughs> song. He 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 dropped some, even though it's trash. He he said some shit on it. Man, this could have been. Yeah, but but let me real real quick. What about the fact that you said August Alcina had a conversation with Will? That's I'm gonna say said. this on Red Table Talk. Jada said that is not true. She made her own decision. Just the fact that they had to say that in order for this girl to have power for what she want to do with her damn body. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I didn't know. Nah, that. you good. We What's say whatever you want. Hell, well, I'm saying, shit. like, in order for this girl to have <laughs> say so and power and to speak about her own body, it had to come through a man. Y- y'all don't get it. We have to literally unthink everything that we do. I've been talking about got on Red Table Talk and said, that's not true. Like, Will can't tell me what I can do with my body. And I think society prepackages relationships and marriage as this possessive thing as this like you this is your husband and he can't do nothing and this is your wife and basically they're they're yours now it's too so much so that they can't even move forward without your say so and I don't think that's what I think that's why they haven't worked I think that's why divorce rates have been so high in the past is that people are not feeling free inside their love and that me personally not to get all spiritual on y'all I think wherever love is Freedom has to exist, and that's the problem we have. We have to let the the, possess, the possessive ideas. No, uh, ooh, sorry, girls, don't come for me. I know the ladies not gonna like that, but I said what I said. I she said, said what she said. But going back though, I want to talk about the whole like Jada said the whole entanglement thing, and social media kind of just took it and just ran with it, making entanglement T-shirts and like basically it's funny, but and just praising the whole fact that she said entanglement. But like me personally, I think like. Had, I mean, like I said, we talked about this, like had the roles been flipped, had the the table been switched and she was grilling Will about doing something with somebody else. And he said, no, I had an entanglement. I feel like it would have just been like, ah, niggas ain't shit. Nick, da, 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 da. If if Jada ain't. That's that's what they're saying. That's what they're saying saying about Jada. That's what I, they, mean, well, I don't see that. That's what I don't I see that. I don't see that. I don't okay, see so that. It might be. A, it might be the algorithm. My timeline Maybe. probably has more opinions. Than <laughs> it might be the <laughs> algorithm. Maybe y'all timeline look different from mine. But I'm seeing a lot of grilling on Jada end too. Like uh, she, you know, I will say. I won't say, I won't say it don't exist. But why? I don't. I don't blame Jada. She did what she had to do. I feel like she need to be prayed. I mean, shit. Just the fact that Jada was not even given ownership over her own dang secret. Why I just get to speak on her, what they did? Right. You know, I would have respected right. her more if she kept it real, honestly. <laughs> but kept it real with who? Who are we? 
<laughs> I mean, it got out. It, we don't. We didn't need to know in the first place, but since it but, got out, but it, mean, it got out because a man decided to put it out there. Like, nah, that's, yeah. that's the control. Damn, thing, right? damn my it. album, my album not selling. So what can I do to get the num? <laughs> what can I do to but get the numbers up? Power. Oh even, yeah, that's, even that's power. Even that's true. a sense of power. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. That's true. It's, he now, put, he, he kind of did an expose. Again. He did an expose on her real quick, like this. Yeah. Capitalism once again, so that's why I'm like capitalism to us. Right. I have a very capitalistic family. I, I admit. Yeah, I mean, we're all Americans. We, we're all Americans. Yeah. We have to see some value in it. it it's yeah. hard not to be complicit to capitalism, and that's why I have to like think about like, dang, it's it's it, we're, it's we're we're so used to it and nuanced to it that we don't know how. This is why I don't think that like the here's another unpopular opinion. Like the idea of like what Jay Z says, black wealth is gonna get us free. No, it's not. Capitalism is not gonna get us to black liberation. But we think that the money or the capitalist, like if we can just be up there with them, they'll respect us. They and will that's not. Been, that's been hurting us the whole time. Right. Another day, another conversation. Right. <laughs> another day of conversation. Well, we're gonna go ahead and end it on that note. This has been another episode of the Wholesome Men Podcast. Y'all go ahead and make sure y'all follow us at Wholesome Men Podcast underscore 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 on IG. And of course, go ahead and follow me, your boy, at K Logan <laughs> underscore 70. Justin, go ahead and check us out. Again, again, it was great conversation, great dialogue. I guess I have a very problematic standpoint. I guess I need to work on myself a little bit. But I mean, I'll admit to my flaws. But you already know what it is. Your favorite wholesome man, JLP underscore 63. Let's get it. Uh, yeah, so it's the raspy doctor. Uh, yeah, Dr. B. Don't forget, follow me on my more petty social media, which is petty next door underscore four um and i just want to give a special uh thanks to our guest um the, the wonderful uh guest tori and tim go ahead close us on out tori okay thank you gentlemen for having me tonight it was fun good conversation i don't think you're problematic justin i think you're just a product of what society has produced and it's you are oh, no. i mean again i i was I was the women's spokesperson today, but I don't speak for all women. My opinions are my own based on my experiences, but my name is Torian again. You can find me at Torian is all things on Instagram and YouTube. Um, I'm on Twitter, but it's under Torian Tim. So you can check me out there and yeah. Yo, all right, y'all. This has been another episode. And one more thing. We need justice for Brianna Taylor, for sure. Facts. So, yes. Gang, gang. Gang, gang, Justice gang. for Brianna Taylor. All right. This has been another episode. Y'all be blessed. Peace. Peace.